Hey everybody, it's Jennifer from the Channel Federator Network here with another really awesome monthly live stream. And this week it's all about making shareable web comments comics with Sam Ellis. Say hi, Sam. Hello, everybody. So Sam uh, makes online comics, cartoons, games. He's made comics for Federator Books, uh, uh, Catbug ebooks that we've made. Um, you can definitely check them out. I'll post the link in the description below later. He's also worked on projects with Boom Studios, Cartoon Network, Disney Interactive, uh, FX, and Marvel. Um, and where you live with your wife and two sons, dogs, and six chickens. Six chickens. Do right. you have fresh eggs every morning? Usually, yes. Except in the winter when they stop playing. Oh no, and then they just want food and they don't get yeah, it. Just, they're worthless then. Well, then that's when you cook them. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about more about yourself. Like, what? Um, I know you've made the Catbook ebooks. Which ones have you? Because we have a lot coming out. Which uh, ones have you made? Um, so I did the first three, and mm -hmm. then I did. Uh, oh man, what are they called? Uh, there's an ice cream man one, and. Uh, I don't know. It's it's been a year, two years. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. They were they were a long time ago. Oh, and then the the Frederator uh, Bravest Warriors novella. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. I did those. Uh, I just got back from doing uh, season three of the Awesomes. All the storyboards for that. How but, was that? Oh, it was fun. I mean, it's like seventy hours a week, but you know, pretty awesome. Uh, it, it's fun to work on, on those and do storyboarding. Like I love telling stories and finding out, uh, how to change, um, other, uh, like yeah, everyone has an idea of how they want to see it. And, um, mm -hmm. the way we were working on it is that we actually had first passes done by the LA office in like what we call thematics, mm -hmm. which are really rough circles and stick figures and uh, just kind of placements. But um, because we really wanted to up season three's look, uh, we put a lot of those off to the side and totally changed things, which was uh, pretty stressful. It was, it was pretty, time crunches out, it's, it's all good. Um, Do you have a project that you, were, had, that you worked on that was your favorite? Um, so I used to work uh, for this company called 7030 Productions in mm -hmm. In a show called Frisky Dingo, and then I like, love Frisky Dingo. Awesome! I love when people remember Frisky Dingo because uh, it was it was really funny, and I loved working with those guys. We uh, it was six of us. Um, There's Christian, Casey, David, Eric, Mac, Neil. Oh wait, and Chad. He came in at the end, but um, so he's the seventh. But we uh, all worked together in a little house in the East Atlanta Village. Uh, in a neighborhood, rather than renting office space, we bought a foreclosed house, and uh, it was it was such a dream job working with those guys. Um, started at ten, lunch was at twelve. We got back from lunch. The boss usually paid for it uh, around two. We worked from two to four, and then play Call of Duty from four to six. I was it was great. Our boss's wife went let him play video games, so he forced us to play video games, which I thought was kind of awesome. Because uh, it was right out of college, it was like sweet. Um, kind of boss. Yeah, it was great. It was great, but uh, that that show is really fun to work on, and um, you know, it was a little short, twelve minute uh, setup or eleven minute setup. So we would kick out a, a show every three weeks, um, and uh, it, it was just really fun. Really fun. Awesome. Um, so what we're doing in today's live stream is we're doing a small mini crash course in some of your methods of making comics where you use um, Illustrator, right? Using yeah. your Mac and your Cintiq for making a comic from turning ideas into scripts, like from start to finish, basically, yeah, right? Pretty much, yeah. So I've got, I've got a couple different working methods that I use. And, um, oh, hey, Steven. I see Stephen Ray Brown there. I, I remember meeting him back in Indiana years ago when he was a uh, bunch of kid, a child, a uh, man child going to uh, to school uh, down, I think he was in the Indianapolis area going to the Art Institute. I think he came up for a, a workshop I did in Muncie. Um, and uh, he says, what was the first comic you work on? 
Uh, so I did this, okay, the very first comic, if you can find it, it's an image comic. It was done like 96. It was Newman issue eight. It was, uh, I count it, it was a fan art piece that went into the back of the book and uh, it was just, I don't know, it's this Kodiak guy. I don't remember. It was a really crappy book. <laughs> but I liked it and it was so stupid. But I drew this uh, big grizzly bear guy in a bath towel and uh, wrote Kodiak moments and they gave it a big spot in the back of the book and I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, it was just, it was, you know, I look at that like, oh, if you're trying to find Sam Ellis art and you want to go all the way back, Go find Newman 8 from, like, the mid-90s. Um, hang on, hello, Sam. Those were the authors and main sources of inspiration for your comics. Among them are also the Italian Westerns. Oh, yeah, hang on. Was this someone that I spoke to? Because I'm always talking about uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Yeah, uh, Sergio Leone is, like, my favorite uh, spaghetti Western director and Akira Kurosawa. Ping, yes, please. <laughs> um, those, those are like huge. Who is this? Uh, Alessandro Carducci. Yeah, man, have we spoke before? I mean, these are like, those are like spot on. I mean, for comic creators, um, I, I'm really big into this really crappy of me, but like all the crappy image comics of the 90s were really big for me. And I'm like, oh, I love Rob Liefeld. Some people are like, Oh, he's horrible. He can't draw. But man, that guy was putting out comics before he was like uh, emancipated. He was, out. he was like 16, 17, just putting it out. So, like, that to me was super inspiring being in like the banal suburbs of Virginia Beach. Um, I was like, man, if I could just do these comics. So, looking at his stuff, Arthur Adams who was a self taught artist, um, Todd McFarlane, those guys. But then, like, nowadays, like, my, my heroes are like Alex Toth and uh, John Buscema and Mobius and those guys that were really good at telling a story on oh, Dave Sim and does service and stuff. And then how do you go about using reference to get perfect scenes for the comic? But we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so really quick, let me go ahead and see if I can do a screen share here. And mm -hmm. I'll pull up some uh, things. I'm going to click on screen share. No and problem. Take it away. Desktop. So, let's see. So, is the desktop up here? Mm-hmm. So we've got a little comic page here, and um, I'm going to see if I have uh, an original. Oh, wait. Hang on. Let me pull this up. Let me, I have to show you guys how I originally do these things. Usually, usually uh, these primary uh, K books or whatever, K through second grades, they're the best for making comics. So those... And uh, these little pads, um, I just grab these things and, like, um, just go through them. And I, I write and, and draw and do all my sketching and, and ideas here. And the reason why is when I went so I went to an art school, unfortunately. <laughs> I mortgaged my life for that garbage. Um, I, I went to art school, school, too. It's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I went to art school, and, um, you know, you get those expensive sketchbooks, and, like, in my head, I'm like, these things are sacred. I don't want to, like, ruin them. So I started getting really cheap stuff. So, like, the very first pages that I did for these uh, uh, Adventure Time comics are, like, in here, just kind of sketched and, and thumbed out. And I'll, I'll basically write the beats out. Because since I'm, um, since I'm like, a story artist, there's a, a methodology that I use. I'll tell you guys a secret methodology if you're ever working from a script. It's, I call it the principles of ribbit. Uh, the first one's read. The second one's internalize. The second one, or third one is uh, break down. And the fourth one is beats. And then the last one is thumbnail. So ribbit. You read, internalize, break down, beats, and thumbnail. So I when I'm doing a comic for myself and I'm not working from a script and I'm writing the script, I kind of just, instead of read, I start going, all right, well, what is the story? And for this story, uh, Lemon Grab's makeover, um, I was like, well, Lemon Grab is upset and he uh, needs to get a new face. So uh, in this story, you know, I wanted him to just be upset as per usual. Wow, where's my other, where'd my things go? I don't know. 
Is that just not gonna? You have a lot of apps in your docs. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. I've got like Harmony and and uh, just I yeah I use them all a little bit each. Where did my where did my uh, hang on my uh, all my Windows here? Let me hit Tab and see if no nope, that didn't give it to me. Let me go to Windows. Uh huh. Oh, it's because I switched position on my screens. No. All right. Well, I'm gonna make it work. Uh, Boy, that sucks. Let me see if I bring it over here and then switch to this one because I can do that. Let me screen share, screen share. You can, yeah, you can sw switch whatever screen that you're sharing at the moment. All right, we'll do this and then I'll push this over here and then we'll put this over here. You don't want to see two of my face at once? Yeah, <laughs> it'll create a, a Mobius strip. We'll just right? get to eternity. Okay, so that's... Infinite loop. That's right. Let's go to Illustrator. That's also... Man, that's so frustrating. All right. Let's try this one more time. Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, let me close Illustrator and open Illustrator and see if that works. But while that's closing, what I'll do is bring over... Let's see. So we're on this screen. I'm going to open up... Unicron. Unicron has my freelance Adventure Time, Boom Studios, comics, uh, work in progress, screen grabs. So organized. Oh my goodness. Yeah, all naming conventions, you know. Let's see. All right. So when I first started doing it, uh, you guys, I don't know how many of you guys know Kyle Baker or not, but um, he does, he was an animator that is a very prolific cartoonist and does uh, comic strips. I'll do a lot of drawings on just like uh, computer paper because uh, Kyle Baker taught me that um, you don't have to do like this comic page is a whole bunch of, um, let me make it larger here, is a whole bunch of sketches on other pieces of paper. And these are like just cut and pasted over the top. I don't want to draw the same background twice. Uh, who does? Right? I mean, that's, it's not lazy, it's economical. Um, so if I'm working in that way, like this is how it'll initially look before I lay it out into uh, the computer. So sometimes I work straight digital and sometimes I'm just kind of sitting on a bus or, or in the front yard and uh, breaking out some computer paper and some pencils going, all right, well, let's, let's just do some, uh, some rough sketches. So while that's rebooting, I thought I would open this up. But I usually start this small right up here in that corner. Um, it's just really tiny shapes to give me I, an idea of the layout. So here is Finn laying on his stomach with Jake, and I know it looks like a little, uh, I don't know, Pac-Man trying to eat a seagull or something, but like I just kind of lay out, where's the general shapes? We've got cinnamon bun coming up from the floorboards. We've got the two guys here talking. I don't have any idea what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, that's his mouth, and he's doing the call the police gag uh, from uh, Ren and Stimpy. I thought that would be funny to put that in, you know, with Mr. Horse and the rubber nipple salesman. Anyways, that kind of stuff to me was hilarious. So, uh, yeah, I will, I'll take all these little drawings and extrapolate them and make a, a, a comic layout. Um, and I, I can import these into Illustrator or... I'll just start with the pencil tool and do uh, a rough drawing in there. So let me see if I can get that thing open now. So let's open up. Let me grab some makeover. We're going to go to pages, and we're going to go to the AI files. And let's go with page four. So how do you how do you get ultimately started with your comics, like from the idea of it before yeah. you even start drawing? So the idea for me was... Uh, I just start with a funny picture, and um, the funny picture for this one, uh, it should be in here under sketches. Um, I, it was literally just a, a silly little picture that made me laugh, and uh, I called my sister up and said, hey, let's, let's do a comic, and then submit it to Boom, and um, we contacted uh, Shannon over there, and, and uh, they thought it was funny, and they let us run with it. But um, let's find that sketch, AI files, print files. Let me grab makeover PDF, adventure time PDF. 
Nope, nope. Is it under sketches? Let me grab sketches. Idea sketches. Ah, okay. So uh, there was a picture where I drew uh, the Ice King kissing uh, Lemon Grab's neck. I thought it was funny, kind of creepy. Um, I drew Lemon Grab with Finn's hat on um, and just these different little pictures. These were all done in church. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting on a few going, hey, you know what would be funny? And uh, I would, my sister's out in L.A., so I would screenshot the uh, – <laughs> the picture and then uh, with my phone or whatever, take the photo. I guess that's what they're called, photos. Uh, I would take a picture with my phone and then send it to her. And she's like, aren't you supposed to be doing something right now? And <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess. Um, but I just thought it was funny. Um, let's see. Okay. So this, if, why won't it even let me drag that up? That is interesting. That is wild. I wonder if I have too many things plugged in. Let me unplug this secondary camera and try that again. Now, a buddy gave me an HD camera. He's like, here, try this. I was like, all right. Maybe that messed it up. All right, let's switch over to the other screen. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm so good at this. All right. The so, uh... Hang on. You're, I'm listening. Um, oh, no, I have no sound over here. Hello? Hello? I'm going to blame living in an area called Spotsylvania for, for this. Um, what is, where the crap are my windows? Let me shut down. Let's see. I'm using that, so I'm getting rid of Chrome, and I'm getting rid of Mail. And I'm going to hit Finder and just hit Reset on my Finder window really quick. Sam, uh, are, can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, good. It seems, it seems to have cleared up. Whatever has happened has happened, and it seems it's running a lot smoother now. Oh, good. <laughs> Maybe maybe it's because I had multiple browsers open. Maybe, I'm, I'm yeah. Bad about that. All right, Finder. I'm going to reset my Finder, really quick. And let me just relaunch the Finder. That should fix anything there. So, what got you started in the comics in the first place? Were you always an artist? Did you always? Yeah. Um, I, from a, a wee child, uh, I was a big fan of um, drawing, and I was maybe around eight years old. My dad got me a, um, a comic called How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, and uh, I guess it was a how to draw book, um, and it, I don't want to say it changed my life, but, you know, looking at uh, at that book and then um, being shipped off well, up and down the East Coast, being a military kid, we had the, the, the bookmobile that would come by. I don't see many bookmobiles anymore, mm -hmm. but it used to be like, you know, uh, for the kids out there that don't know what a bookmobile was, uh, it was like the Batmobile, only it was full of uh, adventure on the inside. So you'd get these books and they would stop in your neighborhood and you could grab a um, – you could grab a, uh, a different book, and I would get the Garfield books and the Hagar the Horrible books, and I would get the um, uh, just like the, the history of Spider-Man um, books, and uh, I would get the, um, oh, the Lee J. Ames Draw 50 books, like uh, Draw 50 Presidents or Draw 50... Uh, Hollywood uh, figures or draw 50, you know, that, that draw the F&L mm -hmm. that's out there. I used to get the how to draw series books, like yeah. how to draw cats, how yeah. to draw horses. I love that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. um, I, it really affected the way that I do artwork um, because I try to rep, like create ways to go and make it easily to replicate, which I think is why I went into production artwork uh, for 
for cartoons and stuff because um, the stuff that I do, there's a methodology on, all right, start with this, break it down into these shapes, move from, um, from that shape to that shape, et cetera, and, um, and go through there. I have no clue why my <laughs> layers window, like I'm clicking on window and it just, it jumps out of the program. I have no clue what's going on there. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Are you sure it's not, the window's not popping up in your second screen? Yeah, no, it's not right there. Um, boy, this, this is baffling. Um, let me check. Let me, how many extra windows do I have up there? Let me hit uh, on mission control and see how many extra things I have up there. Why is that all open? That's, I'll tell you, man, first world problems, right? Exactly. Just, just get better. All right, so nothing there. Desktop, boom, that's there, and it's not giving it to me. Where's my reset? Uh, preferences, selection, Illustrator. Wow, it's not even letting me grab the Illustrator menu. Let me move over here and check. Uh, da -da 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 -da, file. Boy, it's not even letting me select it. This is so frustrating. Uh, do you want to stop screen share and see if it'll let you do it for a second? Let me try that. If that does that. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sam. Hey, how's it going? You know, Good. if it was like this all the time, I would hardly ever get anything done. Let me quit <laughs> Illustrator. And, wow, it's not even letting me grab that to quit it. All right, at least I know the hotkeys. Um. So why don't we answer a few more questions from the audience. If you guys have any more questions, totally send us our way while Sam tries to get his computer set and organized. Um, Stevry Bro asks, how much control do you have over the Adventure Time comics? Is there multiple check-ins with Boom or Frederator? Do you have, I mean, obviously we have a few do's and don'ts that you can't do with the characters, but like how much control do you personally have? So uh, for that story, there was only two notes that we got, which is like really lucky because uh, usually I'll get notes um, and I've got a page that I can show you. They were like, you cannot do that. And I'll show you guys the page, which is great because I have it. Uh, and I think I thought it was funnier um, that way because even though that thing's not opening, I'm going to hit relaunch one more time. Um, I, I thought, you know, you should have opened this in Chrome. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> really quick, I'm going to tell them my Sarah. And Sarah, this is on YouTube, so everyone will get to see it. My sister is an editor, uh, lives out in L.A. She works for Orson Scott Card and some other people. Um, she, this was the first comic she was working on, and because it went through so easily, she didn't realize how many rejections you usually get when you go through uh, working with someone else's property. So when we did one, we were ready to resubmit, and we had like a Bravest Warriors story that they were doing with uh, Danny and a bunch of robots that he made. Um, they were like, oh, we're not really looking at stuff right now. And she was like, well, how come? And that's how she talks. And I just, she's like, no, no, it's really good. They should like it. And I was like, hey, you know, that's the name of the game. And I was like, we put all this work into it in advance. We should have really just sent stuff in in the thumbnail stage. But I was still having fun doing it anyways. So I just kept drawing it. Um, but as far as like control, because I was really familiar with the character as of most nerds that like just consume the product, it's like you get to know what it tastes like. So, you know, I was trying to have the characters act in a way that they would within the show. And when you, when you do that and you stay true to like the core ideas, then it's, it's hard for them to, to go, no, 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 we don't do this. Um, but we did try to push things a little bit. Uh, do they have any do's and don'ts regarding their characters? Yes, they do have do's and don'ts. They're very protective over their uh, things. If you ever get a, um, like sometimes I'll do licensing artwork for them, and if it, uh, if it does not match their style guide, you'll get these awesome comments from them like, have they ever drawn these characters before? <laughs> like, awesome, thanks. Oh, that's not insulting at all. Oh, sweet. Guess what? Check this out. Oh, man, I, 
oh, I'm scared to even click on it. Um, it. It's it's opening with Windows. I'm saying that. Please don't, please don't disappear. Mm -hmm. Oh. Did it disappear? Oh, no, it's there. All right, I'm gonna hit screen share while I can. Awesome. Do it up. All right, hang on. Let's let's go with this. Start screen share. All right. So I don't know if it's showing just the window here, which it's just the window. Oh, cool. Because I've got my panel, so I can start taking the panel borders off and the lettering and the individual uh, characters. Let me try to shrink it down so you guys can see it in the window. I'm not sure how much of the window you guys can see or not, but uh, you if where it was was actually perfect. Oh, okay. Let me see the whole thing. Right there back. you go. Yep, right. we can see the whole thing. So when I do these uh, these comics, I treat it like a cartoon. I create miniature layouts where I can move the characters around on the um, the space. You know, some of these are just quick brushed on drawings, which as I as I draw these characters, then I'll go through and do a nice drawing over the top. Um, I, I find it more economical because um, at this rate, and I like to use Illustrator because my file size. By the end of the day, um, if I have one that has, uh, so page seven, page seven has every single page on the file. And it, it goes high res, it says, do you want to replace it? No, ignore that. Um, page seven has uh, one through six plus an alternate six. So this page, is only like 52 megabytes, um, and it has all these, oh, hang on, I have to turn those ones off so you can see the one underneath it. Um, and it has the page under it. Uh, really quick, so this is, <laughs> this page right here is uh, one of the notes. I thought it was funny. Um, so Lemon Grab comes and he steals Cinnamon Bun and he puts him on as a new face, and this, this is what we went with. This is what it was, where he grabbed him by the uh, the buns and, and put him on. And I thought it was funny. Uh, but they said the color pink and the angle and all that jazz, that it just wouldn't fly in a kid's book. And I was like, all right. But, you know, they were like, if you can just have them tie him on there. So, again, because I'm working uh, in individual panels, uh, in pieces, it became a really easy note to uh, to fix. And, you know, are there any rules of thumb when it comes to the ratio of dialogue to images or the general progression of time reading time per page? Uh, no, there's so they say that there's rules, but there aren't any hard fast rules. Um, when I'm doing uh, my robot cowboy samurai strip, which is uh, done over in um, uh, Manga Studio Pro. Let me uh, let me switch because it's gonna ask me if I have that. I, I man, I'm so hesitant to do it. All right, let's open it up. <laughs> it, it, everything's gonna work great now. Yeah. Oh, it's it's all ready. All right. So if we go to that, let me go to RCS Tumblr. Uh, let's bring the Tumblr one up here. Uh, when I'm doing my comics, they come out in strips like this, and I might have no character speaking. Um, there might be little dialogue uh, blocks, and I play with the panel arrangement. For this, because I want to turn it into a print page later, I work with a, a, a panel divided into thirds. This is pretty easy to read on a screen on a computer, um, but because uh, most people want um, the books, then I have, uh, or when I go to a convention, people want the book, then I have it set up in a layout where I can just plug the characters um, into into the, the traditional format. And I, I'm a big fan of Mike Mignola who likes to play with uh, these kind of beats in Hellboy where things will just kind of barely change. And, and to me that's reminiscent of comic strip storytelling where you're dealing with rhythm. Um, so I, I'll play with those kinds of things, and I'll throw in these stupid, uh, you know, little moments where I draw them very silly. Um, but uh, it, as far as a rule of thumb when it comes to the ratio of dialogue to images, it's whatever's best for the story. 
Um, sometimes uh, I'll have a lot of dialogue. Heck, in this um, Adventure Time thing I was uh, flipping through, I mean, I'm, oh, wrong one, same same panel. Um, how many page or panels do I have here? Like a good rule of thumb, they they said at SCAD is you should have between three to seven panels on a page. Well, right up here I've got five, and then right down here I got four, so that's nine panels. And on the next page, you know, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen panels on that page. And it was just what I thought was best for. Uh, the timing. So, I mean, it, it depends on how you want to pace your page. You know, you can either duplicate things to show a progression of time. Um, you can play with the color to show a progression of time. Um, you can use rhythm to help you uh, go through time. You can leave open panel borders uh, to play with the uh, progression of time. So, it, it really depends uh, on what's best for the story. Um, so there is no real hard, fast rule for that. Um, let me open up a new file, and uh, I can show you kind of the process that I go uh, in, in drawing something. Um, so I, I was sitting earlier today thinking, all right, I'm going to conventions, and I'd like to do uh, more things. And I, I came up with the idea uh, so this is like, I'm, I don't care if someone steals the idea. I kind of care if someone steals the idea. But um, uh, so let's see. I want to do um, uh, Robo Kid and uh, Kaiju Boy. I don't know. Kaiju. Is there a reason why you draw straight to Illustrator instead of like doing Photoshop or a different program? Yeah, so uh, because uh, in Illustrator you're working your vectors, uh, vector files are so small, they, uh, they equal tiny. Um, and <laughs> the uh, Photoshop, uh, you're working with raster, which are, uh, uh, oh wait, this also equals math. Um, and then raster is going to be large, and you're going to be working with uh, pixels or squares. Mm -hmm. times infinite. Um, so these files are going to be huge. These are going to be small. And um, a lot of people don't realize it in like, uh, can you see the toolbar over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see all of that. If you can't, the pencil tool, which most people hate in Illustrator, if you double tap it, you get this awesome flyaway menu, mm -hmm. and then you can change your settings. So mine's set to 2.5, 2% smoothness, fill new pencil strokes, and edit with selected pads. Uh, within 12, and I hit OK. So then, as I let me bring that back. Oh my goodness! Really? Is it gonna? Come on! There we go. All right. So now, when I draw with the uh, the pencil tool, I can you know quickly draw and sketch the same way um, you know that uh, that you can with Photoshop. But it's just going to be rough. So um, the files are small, and what I can do is. Uh, um, well, if I hit like Q, I can quick select something and then uh, move the individual points around and, and fix it into place. So, um, so I like to work in that just because it's really fast. Oh, hang on, what's a good way of altering the color palette for a character? Oh, we'll see. Now that's really great for Illustrator as well because when uh, I'll show you. So let's let's draw a quick character. Um, Kid Robo. I don't know. I guess he's going to be a robot. So. You know, I'll draw the character out real quick. And I usually start with the ball and, you know, putting it into the three-dimensional round. So you kind of crosshair it. And this is to show the the shape. It's not really to place the eyes as much as to show that that's a round object. So we'll give him a, a little tiny body because he's going to be this little uh, character. I, I don't know. I mean, we're just going to make We're making it up as we go. That's right. So, little mini Fredbot. Give him a, kid. Yeah, we could do a little Fredbot. It'd, it'd be cool. Um, we'll give him some, some eyebrows. Big eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And glasses. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And we'll give him a little a little spike up here. And um, he'll have... Yeah, we'll make a little kid, kid Fredbot. Okay, so... What I'll do is I'll rough these in. I'm also going to bring the Cintiq closer to me because I'm, like, sitting in a stretch far thing because I usually don't record myself uh, <laughs> on these things. I'm like, eh, I 
got landscape issues to deal with, so he might have a belt with rivets because Fred Bot's got the little rivets, and we might give him these shoulder things and uh, some boots, and um, might sculpt that chin just a bit and bring that up. So, all right. Let's spring this up, and what I'll sometimes do is select all that, and then these little circles uh, over here, they'll let you target everything that's within. If you look at these layers and just pretend it's a layer or a folder that holds a bunch of information inside of that in your little drawer, you click that, and it's going to change everything. So I'm going to make that stroke a little thinner and a little lighter, and we'll bring that down to 50, and I'll lock that layer. Now we have a really nice light thing to draw over the top of, and then mm -hmm. I can start with the brush. And I made these calligraphic brushes, ours is Adventure Time Limb Grab story. Uh, <laughs> ultra fine, fine, medium, bold, bolder. Uh, each one has a slightly different um, uh, kind of line weight variation uh, when you use them. I guess my ultra fine was mislabeled because that was really thick. I'll play with that one later. All right, so mm -hmm. let's, um, let's draw this character. Uh, and we'll start with uh, Bold, and we'll just give him some glasses here. And uh, if anyone has any questions while I'm drawing, feel free to chime in. I can I can talk while I do this. Um, Dan asks, is it okay to freehand cartoon comics? Oh, absolutely. I love freehanded cartoon comics. Um, like, I, I've got a uh, – hang on. I'm peeking behind me on my bookshelf really quick. Uh, is it Jeffrey Brown? Jeffrey Brown, who does the uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, like Darth Vader and Son uh, books. Those are really funny. Um, but all his stuff looked pretty freehanded. Uh, he might go in and, and do some cleanup. So see, I've got all this warbly stuff going on, but because I'm using Illustrator, it'll kind of autocorrect that, and then I can go in and finesse that. See, it looks like crap if I go right there, but then I can kind of grab that and pull it down into place and square things up a little bit. Um, I might even just go like that and kind of whoop, mix things up. Uh, that looks a little too, little too late like there for him. All right, so we will give him a little smile here. What do you think takes the most amount of time for you when you're making comics? Is it coming up with the idea, the actual drawing, coloring? Um, waiting for notes from the editors. Like, I <laughs> will draw like crazy and, and get, I am like, uh, when it, when it comes to me and working with, uh, editors, uh, I'm like that, hor this sounds horrible. Uh, I'm not like this at all, but it, when I'm waiting, I feel like that weird movie stalker boyfriend guy that's like, why won't they just pick up the phone and call me? You know, because I'm like, I don't want to get it finished. Um, it's, it's sad uh, that I can't wait. But um, that for me, that's the hardest part. Like, drawing, uh, man, I can draw all day, and if I have to change it, then no problem, because um, I love drawing. But, like, uh, the initial idea for me um, – Maybe it's pleasing the editors because, like, my sensibilities are a little different. <laughs> Sorry, that makes me laugh just thinking about it. Um, I don't know. Um, is it uh, – Ran asks, is it hard to use Illustrator? Uh, okay, so I, I've got this really funny quote that I tell people all the time. The things that you persist in doing become easier, not that the nature of the thing itself has changed, but your power to do it has become increased. So, um, you know, when we're born, the only thing that we know how to do is suck. Um, and that's how we start life. We just suck. Uh, you know, we're little babies. We can't do anything. Life sucks. Um, but then one day we decide to fight this, like, super heavy, uh, strong, powerful uh, force called gravity. And, um, you know, we, we fight through it, and we're able to push through it. And uh, some people... Um, you know, they, they keep going and they, uh, I don't know, they become like roller derby stars and stuff like that. But, you know, for, for us, we, we have to decide how much time we put into, 
uh, anything. So like Illustrator can be difficult, but I mean, I, you see I'm using these tools the same way you would use Photoshop for the most part, except I'm being really rough and <laughs> quick with this. Um, but as far as, uh, so right now, really quick, let me explain what I'm doing, then I'll jump back on that thought. I'm adding these little points, and then I'm deleting them so that I can uh, draw through something and then uh, have that line kind of clear. So as we back out, you know, it'll, it'll look a little nicer than it is way up close. Um, but as we, we keep working on stuff, it'll become easier once you learn the interface of anything. Um, you can do these, though, with pencil. I mean, you know, uh, there, there's nothing wrong. There's no shame in that. It's just, for me, I, I like being able to hit Control-Z. Uh, it's just, it's clean. And how, how much would you recommend an actual Cintiq over another cheaper drawing tablet, like a bamboo or a Wicom? So I have on Intuos, I mean. behind me two Intuos 2s. Um, I've got, I'm drawing on a Cintiq right now, but that's because, you know, I uh, for years I used the Intuos, and um, I kind of graduated to the uh, Cintiq once I had enough jobs that would uh, pay for the uh, – the Cintiq, uh, if you're not getting paid for one, uh, okay, if you're rich, awesome, get one. Um, if you have parents that love you, uh, if they don't love you, I'm sorry, man. My parents love me. No, I'm just kidding. They don't love me at all. I'm kidding if they watch this. Um, but, uh, you know, you can use an NGOs. It just takes a little bit of practice to um, – to, well, you play video games. You can hit buttons without looking at your hands. Um, come on, kids. I know you got strength to do it. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I kind of lost my thought there. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, but if, if you could afford it, you would recommend. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can. Yeah. But I have a lot of friends that use the um, off-brands, and they mm -hmm. do just fine. A lot of them have the Surface Pro, and, um, you know, they seem to do just fine with that. So. This needs to come down. Um, there's another question by Randy. Yes. Do you find that depth, in a story sense, tends to emerge from just playing around, or does it start with a firm idea or a them uh, thematic direction? Um, I'm going to say that it comes from consistency of doing stuff. Um, if you have a story, and you have it all kind of planned out in advance, but you don't regularly post, uh, you don't regularly add to your story, um, then it only has, because it is only what it actually is, uh, is published, if that makes sense. Like, you might have ideas, and you may have written it all out in your uh, notebook, but unless you're sharing those ideas, it's never going to grow. Like, you know, you watch Adventure Time and you um, you see things like uh, uh, the Mushroom Wars and you go, oh, man, you know, the, I've heard that Penn says that he didn't know how deep <laughs> the show was when he first uh, pitched it initially. And, um, you know, that comes from, from growth and people uh, continually playing with it. You know, you might have these big, long, uh, episodic, ideas, but if you don't actually, um, you know, keep doing it, it'll never, it'll never get there. It's like life. You know, every day you live your comic a little bit, you know, every day you live your life and it doesn't always, life isn't perfect. So like when I'm drawing this and it kind of, to me, kind of looks like garbage, I'm like, uh, man, there's so many things that I'd like to clean up and fix on this. Oh, he needs like a giant rocket ship kind of <laughs> backpack thing. Hang on. Um, but, you know, when you uh, – sorry, there's a fin there, and maybe he has one on the other side as well. But where would we see that? Probably uh, – I don't want to mess with the silhouette too much. You can uh, always control Z, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that off and – all right, cool. Um, but, you know, the, the – let's see, you find depth in the story – the story since things emerge. Uh, it emerges from just doing it every day. You know, I mean, look at how uh, 
I mean, I hate to say Garfield. Look at how Garfield's changed over the years. I know he's been pretty much the same thing. But, you know, his characters have changed. Where did Lyman go? That's right, Jim. I'm calling you out. Where's Lyman? <laughs> it's real quiet when everyone asks him. Um, but, you know, the things change from, from longevity. Um, and that's where depth comes, um, is from doing stuff all the time. All right. So let's, let me show you guys how I do uh, some coloring tricks on this. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Some people use live paint. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to turn off those back layers. I'm going to back out a little bit. We're going to select it all. We're going to go up to File. Uh, no, we're going to go to Object. We're going to turn it into a rasterized image. So I'm taking a, uh, hang on. We'll work with that. We'll hit OK. So now it's a rastered image. And if we come up, you can see there's like little tiny squares. So this is what a raster is versus a vector. And then I'm going to do this silly thing, hit image trace. What image trace is going to do is turn it from a rast from a vector to a raster back to uh, a vector. Now I have to check on it to make sure that things are closed. I usually go in and ah, oh, dang it, I missed that little spot. All right, I can fix it. I'm going to hit expand, and now when I select this, I'm just going to erase right here really quick, and let me delete really quick. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. It's easier to see if I drop this underneath. I'm going to make a color card to put underneath it. And we're going to start with red because that's what we're going to have under him. And it's, oh, for some reason we're in gray. Let me go to file, uh, color mode, RGB, Color mode down. Why don't you explain really quickly the difference between RGB and CMYK? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, and I'm going to use a little color menu over here. Um, RGB, actually, let me grab a slider. So, we have the color picker here. RGB is going to be red, green, and blue. And you have a 255 slider in each one of these. So, if we go to zero on each one of those, then the color that we're looking at is, whoops, is black because. RGB is uh, additive light mixed together. HSB, uh, are gonna, we're going to touch on that in a second, but CMYK is, add, is additive ink on paper. So it goes the old uh, press uh, working C for cyan, M for magenta, Y for yellow, and K for black. When these would add together, uh, all of them at 100, you get like this really dark black. Now, back in the day, you used to not put those all the way up if you want to make black because you would flood the press with too much ink. So there was a ratio that you would put together. And I want to say it was like a 60, 40, 20 kind of mix with 100 on the K. But uh, at any rate, so RGB is used mostly on screen, television, things like that. CMYK is for print. And then HSB, H is going to be your hue. So we have your color slider that goes in all the different hues. S is going to be your saturation, so it's going to be how saturated that is. As you can see, it's really desaturated here, and then the colors become really vibrant there. And that's the intensity or the chroma. Brightness is going to be how much light we let through, so it's going to go uh, to really bright red, down to dark black, and then we're back to RGB, and then you've got your hexadecimal stuff. But uh, that's going to be specific coded uh, six-digit colors. It's a, a pain in the butt. To, I don't know who went through and like assigned all those, but someone did. Um, and thank them for it. All right, so I'm going to delete all this, what I call slop. Oh, dang it. So see, there was a little piece in there. So what I'll do, because that's selected, is I'll go up, look for that little thing, and then just kind of erase to disconnect those lines. Once I have all these uh, deleted, then I have him, and he's white, and then I can get rid of this junk. Now I can start, uh, let me just make a little palette here. So we'll go ahead and as we bring this up, maybe we want it to be a little less bright. So I'll bring that down. We'll have our shadow color and then I'll do this and we'll have um, a highlighted color. Uh, shoot, we'll go to saturation, bring that down. So now we have three colors to kind of work with, right? So what I'll do is I'll grab this with the eyedropper, and I'll hold Alt, which gives me a little black eyedropper, and then I just start going through. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. So once I get that filled in relatively quick, 
um, then I can go through and uh, and really I could have just selected all this, select same, fill color, and then grab this for the initial pass. Then if I um, grab that, let's do that again, select, if we get all the red, we're going to fill color, uh, yeah, same fill color. I'm going to copy this, paste to the front, and then I'm going to drop this color down. Now, why would I do that? Well, if I get my eraser, then I can come through and I can start erasing areas where I want to see the red underneath, so I can start deleting that. So for like, if you're doing a web comic and you want to do like a quick uh, pass on color, then you can um, just go through the drawing really quick and, and you know, give yourself a quick shadow. Well, I did not, let me get a little closer there. And we can go ahead and work that closer delete that, but you can do a really quick um, cell shade on it. That doesn't really make a lot of sense with the shadow that I'm doing. There's a couple different ways that you can go about doing that. Um, one of the questions that was brought up was, how can we change the color palettes to change uh, environments and backgrounds? So in uh, a, a thing like Harmony, you've got, this is a trick that I made well, I didn't make it. Adobe made it. You can grab all this color, and then let's go to object. Let's see. Where did it go? Edit. There we go. Edit. So we'll go to edit colors and see how that, and then you can go to recolor artwork. And then as that comes up, you can double click on the color. Let's go ahead and, I don't know. Yeah, we'll do a darkish blue, I'll hit OK, and then maybe that one's going to be. Do you have like a general rule of thumb when for like environments? So say going from from the middle of the day to dusk in an environment, do you like tone it down, like add more yellow to it, or do you have specific rules like that? Yes. Um, so for those, let me, let me actually grab, let me see what I have here in my... Matrix, Pitches, Green Shoe. Sorry, Green Shoe guys. I'm going to go through some of our old stuff. Let's go through Store Mate. How large is your hard drive? I've got a couple of them. <laughs> Let's see. LO Alps, McDonald's, Urban Sports Bar, Store Mate, Fort County. Green Shoe, Progzilla. That's from a different network. Sesame Street, Play Forge. Where is our Paul Revere? Paul Revere, Siftio, oh, Revere, okay. So let's go through um, this background and see which one this was. Uh, it's probably background one. So on this background, we have a little Paul Revere character up here, and um, it, it's kind of a, a Dawn type character. There's a couple different things that I'll do for uh, a background in changing it. And what I'm going to do is drop this. It's going to be white with a black border around it, and it it just knocks it out. Well, let's turn this into like a yellow. And I'm going to come up. I told you guys about this little circle here. Click target to drag, move, etc. I'm going to change the opacity up here, the blend mode, to a soft light. And what the soft light does is it it creates like a a wash over there, and I can change. The, um, the opacity or the intensity that it's over there. So now we have this different feel coming down. And I can change that color uh, to any other uh, color. Maybe it's later in the day or, or um, let's see, what happened there? Was it not selected? Let's bring that down. So we can change how that feels. And what's nice is when you create these uh, screens over the top, it changes the character on the inside as well so that they're also affected. So when I'm doing a background for um, a show, I might I, I like to play with stage lighting, so I'll use uh, a gradient, and let's grab this here and then turn it into a gradient, and then 
So right now we got really crummy things. Now, a lot of people are scared on how to use gradients in Illustrator. You've got two little blocks here, and if we double click these, well, one, let's make sure that we're, I don't want to hide the options. Let's make sure that we are in, you know, let's double click here. Uh, let's go from yellow, and then we'll turn this to like uh, blue. Why is that? Okay, I want that to be RGB as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and make that a blue. I'll we'll slide that over. And then you can change. If I hit G, you get your little slider. You can move that, and you can create some really nice stage lighting. And then I'm this sucker that likes to use, uh, like, magenta and purple on, like, everything. Uh, it's like my Frank's Red Hot. So I'll, I'll – oh, I grabbed a tree. Those guys down. I forgot I made a mask to hide these trees. I did this background for a uh, for a web cartoon a while back, and I have this stupid tree. All these things are on different layers. And a lot more. As a side note, I'm totally addicted to hot sauce, and Frank's Red Hot is oh, yeah. absolutely one of my favorites. <laughs> Man, I put that mess on everything. All I right. Also, especially eggs. Oh yes. So good on eggs. Yes. All right. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'll just grab it and drop it over the create new layer. And then mm -hmm. duplicate it. So you can see that intensified it. And what I'm going to do here now is grab this and then create like a, a magenta pink kind of color. Because like I just really dig that. And then over here uh, I'll make this kind of purplish color. And then it's like Jim in the holograms, you know. So I'll do something like that. But then I'll change where the um, the uh, hot points are for this. And let's see if that gave it to me, yes or no. Let me look at this. Let me look at my linear on here, G. So let's make this shorter, more abrupt, and just check the opacity so that we can make sure that it's showing up normal. Oh wait, normal, and you have to click on this. Once once you hit that circle, you have to, if you're going to grab it, you have to grab it from there each time. If you don't, then you're gonna have multiple inputs that change how it's being affected, and that'll like drive you crazy. So uh, let's bring it, I like going from the top to the bottom, so the, the heat's coming from there, or if, because we have the sun over here, sorry, it'll make it more sense if we do a radial and we kind of pull out from there. Um, well, all right, that's fine. And then we'll go back to soft light, which will give it kind of a nice feel going over. And then the uh, the blue, we'll go ahead and do this. Um, let me lock this one and drop that underneath so that when I touch this, it'll select those colors. And we'll stick with linear. But you know what? We're going to go from... Let's see, is that yellow to blue? Yeah. So we'll have yellow at the top going blue to cool, and then we can work with it. So that over the top, sorry, I'm kind of rambling here. It, it'll give it a different feel, and th these are just the yellow palette that I originally created, but if you want to change the mood of it, you can um, go back over and create these kind of ambient stage lights for it. I don't know. I dig, I dig so using yellow, blue, purple, pink. So basically, it's just you're creating a gradient with a lower opacity and a soft light layer. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. And then you can play around with the colors based on the lighting. Is there any colors that you say, like, avoid, maybe? Um, or just everything's fair game depending on what you want you know, to do with it? Everything is kind of fair game, but you want to, like, a rule of thumb that I use is if you have a warm... Um, a warm color, which would be your, uh, so your, here, let me hit this, and let me grab a brush so I can, I like to write with, I don't know why I like to write. <laughs> All right, so your warm colors are going to be like uh, uh, red, uh, man, ooh, yellow, boy, oh, that's not wanting to write at all. <laughs> yellow, um, and then like orange. That's what you get for orange. And then your cools are going to be like purple, blue, green. Yeah, see, that worked better. One. 
So when you're working with that, think about the uh, the color that's. And I should have done that. I should have lined them up. Um, think about their complementary color, and if you're working within this spectrum, uh, whatever has the most, go to the one that uh, that has mm. like mostly orange, and use your cool color to to be your shadows. Um, it just seems to work pretty well. That, that gets into the color theory nonsense. But we go over color theory at this uh, school that I have. <laughs> Let me throw a quick plug in there really quick. Um, I've got this design school. Sorry, I'm so scattered my computer. No, it's okay. Right. Um, I'm actually going to suggest that because it, it's been over an hour already, and I like to keep the live streams to an yeah. hour, would you be up for doing a Making Shareable Web Karmics Part 2 next yeah, month? Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I think I have time. Uh, next week, I'm going to be at AwesomeCon in D.C., so if you're in D.C., at the end of May uh, at the Walter Reed Convention Center. Uh, it truly is an awesome show. Um, uh, yeah. I, are you gonna? Are you just going for fun, or are you going to have a panel? Oh, no, I'm always, yeah, I, I go to, so I, I'm always working at these things. Um, but, yeah, if you go to Never Say, or nsdstudios.com, it's loading. Um, there is a calendar that you can catch me or other instructors uh, from Never State I stu uh, Studios um, at what conventions we're at. So there's going to be more instructors that are put on here right now. It's me and Ransom Getty. Um, but we are trying to kind of combat for-profit education because we don't think that students should have to uh, mortgage their lives to go to school. So, you know, our two-year program is like $12,000 uh, as opposed to the 87000 from the Art Institute or the 245000 on the high end at RISD. Uh, I, went, I went to Parsons. I oh, wanted to talk about it. Yep. So, you know, those student loans, it can be anywhere between 1000 to 3000 a month, and that can, like, squash some dreams. Especially There's, artists. Because it's yeah. it's a lot of it's who you know, and as a young student, it's hard to get that network right off the bat, you know. So like, so many artists in the industry are willing to give their information for free. That um, you know, they're like I was just at Tidewater last weekend, um, and the artists there are just, you know, they're willing to help out and give you that information for free. And, and I am too, for the most part. Um, but I do have a, a design school because I got to feed the kids. Um, but it's also, you know, the reason why we're doing it is we think it's important for people to learn from artists that are working and not just uh, artists that maybe have gone through school and then they're teaching abstract concepts of um, like, well, this is what I think would, uh, this is what I think you should learn. I, I heard down through the grapevine they might be teaching something that's like not so current. Oh, wait, should I use my Intos 5 in front of, in front on the side of my PC? I always, when I used the Intos, it was always down here, like I'm shifting gears in a car. Um, <laughs> nice. That's where it was. And I would always do this. I'd lean in really close. Sorry, my screen's off to the side here, my, uh, the, the, uh, Wacom or whatever, uh, but it, I'd always like get in really close. Even though all you have to do is hit like Shift Plus or Command Plus to like zoom in. Right. I'm doing. I'm old. I gotta get <laughs> paper. And uh, I'm wearing. Have it side hard. I don't wear glasses, but I wear these. I have a couple Disney artist friends that um, you spend long hours in front of the Cintiqs, and there's a lot of blue light that comes out more than you get from the sun. And your uh, retinas will detach <laughs> if you're not careful. So you get these yellow tinted uh, like gamer gunners or whatever. I got these really cheap Call of Duty ones from like Black Ops Two because that no, it's the first Black Ops because um, it's it's not the current game. So they were like ten dollars on Amazon. If I get awesome. that, I'll throw it in the comments. <laughs> Because I was like, yeah, I don't want to lose my eyes. Kind of use. No, them. that's amazing. You totally should, and you should also tell us where to find your comic for um, Robot Cowboy Samurai. Yeah, so uh, right now, uh, it's at rcscomic.com. I'm. It's in. We're moving it over to the Never Say Die site. So, 
it, just check out NSD Studios. Uh, those characters are going to be used in our school program, as well as the amazing adventures of Mr. Paper, the Salem Woods kids from Monster Dojo. Um, so that our students that are going to be working on children's books and comic books will have access to these characters. We're doing a yearly anthology uh, where the, the students will be able to do stuff. They'll be able to work on the card. I have a card game. I did a Kickstarter that was successful a couple years ago called uh, Throwdown. Nate Olson has some uh, copies. Have him bring them in. Uh, I will. Play. Um, it's kind of like war. Uh, but I want my students to have the opportunity to work on the card so they can go, look, I have experience uh, doing this, and then they get copies of the games that they can go out and sell and keep all the money because I, you know, I, I'm okay. They'll, they need the money. I need money, too, <laughs> but they need money. So uh, let's see, are you pushing for more uh, than the web comic and card game? So Really quick, a little note, because it's been development hell, and if uh, Conrad Montgomery over at uh, Cartoon Network can help me accelerate things, uh, he came back and visited a uh, film festival that him and I were judging uh, in D.C., oh, man, five years ago? And uh, I was doing a little thing about pitching properties, and he said, did you say that you have a property with a robot and a cowboy and a samurai in it? And I, I didn't at first. It was a robot that was a cowboy samurai. And I, he was an executive at Disney. And I was like, yes. And, <laughs> and I get a copy of that. And I was like, sure. Can I send it to you in like two weeks? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So I called my sister who was in L.A. And I was like, hey, I need to fly you out. And you need to help me write this because he's a good writer, um, my partner. The way we work is we, we uh, fight and she cries and like, we sing uh, Dave Matthews and Grover's about feeling stuff. Anyways, that's how we work. So Sarah came that's out. how the magic happens. Yeah, so she helped me retool it, and it became way better than it was. And um, when he left, so he went to Cartoon Network, and I, I went out to, uh, to, oh, man, where is it, Burbank and Glendale. I went and hung out with Eric Holman, and he, he said, I really like it, but it's not – what we do, we do cart like comedy stuff, and and for me, like the RCS stuff is a little more Avatar, Airbender stuff. I was like, yeah, it's you know, it, it was super episodic, but I was like, ah, eh, well, I'm here, I might as well go in. Eric was such a sweetheart, man. I don't know if he likes being called a sweetheart, but it was real nice to me going in there and, and really helping me figure out to know what I should be pitching to like you guys at the Frederator office rather than. Um, the stuff because my stuff was geared towards Nick and Disney, um, but uh, yeah, so I'm still working on that. It's just you know we're trying to retool things and make sure that we're not deviating from the core vision of the project, but uh, still get it out there. So awesome! So um, thank you, Sam, for coming on with us. What I'd love to do is next month we're gonna have part two to finish up because uh, we had a few computer problems starting up. Um, <laughs> It's okay. We'll have it all figured out for next time. Yep. Um, so we're gonna, yeah, we're going to go through um, from start to finish. We're going to finish the Fred, Fred Bot character, turning it into an actual comic, how you're paneling. Um, uh, text, all that effects, all that stuff next yep. time. It froze. It froze there at the end. <laughs> Am I back now? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, perfect time. Um, so again, I'm Jennifer, and this is, has been Sam, and we're going to be around next month for part two of this. So definitely keep in touch and check out the Frederator community in order to make sure that you stay up to date with everything. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Toodles. <laughs>